How's it going? We're going to solve question number 121, best time to buy and sell a stock. So first thing we're going to do is read the question and try to analyze it. Um, let's go. Say you have an array of which the ith element is the price of the given stock on a day i. If you were only permitted to complete at most one transaction, that's a key word right there, i.e. buy one and sell one share of a stock, Design an algorithm to find the maximum profit. Note you cannot sell a stock before you can buy. So what I mentioned before, any of these questions, if they drop down a note, those are probably really, really important into your algorithm. Um, so let's let's really paraphrase this, what this is actually asking um, and what you're actually given. So you're given an array of numbers and each of those numbers represent a price for a given day. Uh, and the index of that array effectively defines the day. Um, so let's look at an example here uh, to have a better understanding. So the example that they give us here uh, highlights 715364, right? So just assume that that at index zero, this is like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay, I know there's no trading on Saturdays, but whatever. We'll just arbitrarily think that there's a trading on Saturday. Um, so on day one, the price is at seven bucks. Day two, it's one dollar, five, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera right? Um, we look at this. Um, ideally, if you want to find the maximum profit, um, you would want to buy low and sell high, right? Common thing, makes sense. Um, and one of the second constraints that they mentioned is that you must buy a stock first before you could sell, right? This is very important. Um, so when we look at this example, um, if I were to say like, okay, arbitrarily, I'm going to buy this stock at seven bucks. Um, if we continue to look at the things remaining in our array, um, we're never going to make a profit because nothing in the subsequent things are higher than seven. So I will, I'll be pretty dumb to buy the stock at, at seven bucks. Ideally, I want to buy at the lowest price. So I'm going to move to my second element and look at, okay, well, this is definitely a lot lower than our previous day. So probably I would be, uh, it would be ideal for me to buy the stock at the lowest price, right? Um, so in this particular scenario, uh, the maximum profit is obtained when you buy it at $1 and you sell it for six bucks, making a net profit of $5, right? So, um, Let's look at a second example so we understand the problem more. Um, if you're given an array that contains like a descending order of stock prices, because the rule of saying that you must buy a stock before you sell it, um, that actually makes this particular element over here output zero effectively because you know you can't sell things at a loss in a descending order, right? So it wouldn't make sense. So let's let's try to solve this problem. Um, when you tackle these type of problems, you have to ask yourself, uh, what kind of patterns do you see in this problem uh, before you even tackle it, right? And what kind of attributes you know uh, it's given here? So you know for a fact that you need to buy something first, and then you need to sell. Th that's key. Um, another attribute you could think about is that um, nowhere in here that says that the array or that you're given is like sorted, so you don't have to consider that at all. Um, another thing is like, okay, um, all you really need to do is really, you know, find the lowest price within the array and find the highest price that's, uh, at a later date. Um, and effectively I could get the profit, right? So, um, if you think more deeper in this question, um, as you iterate through each day, you're almost, um, uh, you almost need to make a decision on each day. Right. So, for example, I'm looking at seven. Right. And that when I'm on day one uh, at seven, it's pretty much OK. I have no options. Right. I could buy it or I could sell it. Well, in this case, I'm going to probably say um, I'll buy it for now, but I'm not probably that's not a good time to buy, but I'll still buy it for now temporarily. So reach on the day two is more interesting because you're going to look at, OK, well, if I just waited one day, you know, I'll buy it at a dollar, um, then everything behind me. I don't really care anymore, right? Because this is probably best for me to buy at a lower price than seven bucks, right? So at this particular instance, I'll probably go like, okay, well, this is the price I'm going to buy at, right? 
Um, and if I were to do that, I'm going to go the next day and check whether or not, okay, is this price uh, bigger than what I've bought it at? If it is, then maybe I could compute something here um, and then I can move on to the next element, right? In this case, I would say maybe I'll compute, uh, use a little bit of dynamic programming where um, as you go along the array, you will compute something and store that value back into your array so you don't have to go back track and find what the actual um, profits are. So in this case, it'll be like, okay, well, um, I, I, when I reach the date, three i'm just gonna say okay well why don't i store the profit in my array right so i gotta take my i bought it at one dollar and because the next day is actually higher than me if i were to sell it this day that's gonna be four bucks but i'm not really selling it yet i'm just recording what the profit could be right so i move along for the next next day um and, and do the same thing this would be like my net profit would be two bucks and this day it will be like eight bucks i mean sorry five dollars and three dollars right so once i have a matrix or at least an array that tells me uh, the profits per day if i were to sell at that day um, then effectively all i needed to do is take the maximum of that array or at least maintain a variable that would store the maximum profit as i go along and return that Simple enough, right? So let, let's try to code this up and um, that probably provide a little bit further understanding. So first things first, like I said, I always like to convert this back into ES6. Uh, we can more fun, less things to type. I'm going to first try to write in a, let create a variable called buy. I'm going to buy it um, just for argument's sakes. I'm going to force myself to buy it at price zero. So at the first price as a temporary something to store it. Um, and then if I were to buy it that day and sell on the same day, um, my price, my prices at zero would effectively be zero. So I know this is probably, again, uh, not the best to mutate your inputs. Um, you should technically like most functions you should not mutate things that are sent into you ideally you would create a copy or a, a you know a cache array and then return that back to you but for this programming thing you know um i just don't want to create more more space because we're trying to save as much space as possible right um so for now we're just gonna mutate uh, what I have before in front of me and then just go beyond that. So our array now looks something like, let's have an example. So our array looks something like this right now. It gives a zero and all these remaining elements, right? So that's our array right now. So what I want to do right now is actually iterate through each of these elements and then compare it to see if my price, well, the price I stored here is $7, just so you guys know. Uh, I'm going to go write a for loop four let i equal to one because i already took account the zero index i'm going to start at position one instead so i'm going to go i is going to be less than the prices dot length and i is going to be plus plus so i'm going to be incrementing it so what am i going to do here so as i incre as i go through these elements i'm going to make sure i'm going to compare some stuff right i'm going to make sure that if my, the price that i buy if the price that I buy it is greater than the price that's listed at that day, I know I messed up, right? Meaning I shouldn't buy, I've bought it at that price. So what I could do here is say that, okay, well my price for buying, or I should actually buy it at the lower price, right? So that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna set my new lower price. Well, in this case, it'll be one because I'm at position one right now. And once I go there, I go, okay, cool. I bought it at that price. It's great, but I'm also not done, right? I gotta make sure that if I were to buy at that price, then I better make sure that my the price I bought it at that position, I'm gonna set it back to zero because I'm not making any profit at that time. So that's gonna be set to zero. So what that does is gets this and manipulates it, makes it into a zero, right? Um, let's make a, another statement. So what if the price I bought is not greater than my existing price? right so that means i'm making a profit so here what i could do is actually create another variable called let profit equal to i'm just gonna say zero dollars right now um so here i could go like profit effectively would be the math dot maximum 
of the price at the particular prices at the particular point I'm at minus the what I purchased that would be the profit or maybe it's just my it will just be the existing profit right so this will keep track as I iterate to see what is the maximum profit I'm gonna make and then from that I could just simply return the results the profit uh, return the profit oops profit and I believe this would solve the problem so uh, again What's gonna happen is I'm gonna go through here, uh, check the my compare my one dollar with the five. So my profit will be came to four here. This will be two. This will be five, and this will be three dollars. But as I go through this, I'm recording what my max profit would be. So once I reach to this point right here, uh, the profit will effectively be five dollars, and what will return would be five dollars. That would match this case. So let's submit and see if it solves it. Oh, I messed up here. Oh, I forgot a little character here. This is what happens when you try to live code. Whoops. Did I mess up again? Oh, I keep forgetting the S's and same here. Another one. Uh, prices is plural because that's what the thing is given and boom, I solved the problem. So uh, that's it. Uh, just make sure when you do co do these coding questions, um, trying to review your code. Um, Either on the whiteboard or, or if you if you go interview with Google, they usually give you a laptop or whatnot, or, or Facebook or whatnot. They give you a laptop option. Just make sure to review your code to make sure you don't have like what I just did right now, which is the sloppiness of, you know, my variable names were plural versus like yeah. You should probably try to adjust that. But but yeah, this is pretty simple. Using dynamic programming, we solved um, a very simple question. All right. If you have any questions or anything like that, please leave some comments below. Just hit that uh, subscribe button and smash the like and uh, we'll stay tuned for the next one. See ya.